Hello everyone, uh, we're going to do a quick talk about the Fliegerfaust, uh, my 9 barrel rocket launcher, uh, that many of the components are actually 3D printed in steel, or um, a steel bronze hybrid, um, but it led to some great results um, and was also difficult in other areas, so we're going to talk about that today. Uh, I've got more information in uh, my book covering this, uh, I'll put a link. It is chambered in 20 millimeter. Uh, it fires nine of these gyrojet style rockets. It uses four angled nozzles that create spin, um, and that spin creates stability when the rocket is leaving the barrel. Uh, these continue to burn even outside the barrel. Um, I don't have a formula yet that will burn out the entire fuel capacity before it leaves the entire barrel. Uh, but for now, it's burning out at about 0.3 to 0.4 seconds. The rockets uh, uh, are held in place with this clip. I only have one rocket left that's fully assembled. Um, and as you can see here, it'll hold nine of them. And this gets loaded into the rear of the launcher. Here in the back of the launcher, we will load the rocket in. Starting from the rear of the launcher, we have this rear belt, um, which is uh, 3D printed in steel. Uh, its purpose is to hold the nine barrels and also hold the rocket clip, um, which is inserted in the back. And these locking lugs rotate and lock it in place to prevent it from coming out. Um, this is a anti-aircraft weapon, so it was designed to be pointed up, so you didn't want your rockets to you know, come tumbling out. Uh, of the rear uh, but this part was 3d printed in steel and bronze you can see the layer lines right there it has a blackish finish on it uh, but you can kind of see each layer that was printed um, and uh, this was printed uh, as a unit and then this movable uh, locking ring uh, was printed in two halves and then welded together if you can see right there it was welded together on both sides. Um, and really it was the only way I could figure out how to get uh, a ring past these two ribs. Uh, if you can see right there, there's no way to really get it over. So um, what we did was print a two halves, welded it together, and it allowed us to have these locking lugs. Um, the barrels themselves, they are regular steel barrels. Um, there was no point 3D printing the barrels as traditional steel barrels were more than enough for um, my work and what I needed to achieve out of it. Moving across the launcher, we have the belt, we have the barrels, and then we have the C channel that your shoulder, um, or this rests on your shoulder. Uh, this is just standard C-channel material. Um, it's just steel. Uh, there is no point printing that. It's something that is off the shelf and easily uh, purchasable. Uh, but right here we have the shoulder rest and this itself was printed in steel um, and welded onto the C-channel. And this was two parts. Um, this was the uh, shoulder rest adapter or connector. And then you have the shoulder rest and you can see um, some of the welds right there. Um, but no, this is a 3D printed part. Um, the design and geometry of it, I just figured it was fairly easy to print and cost effective to print instead of creating a, a pressed die to, to, to fold these, especially for a one-off print. Uh, so for this application, we were happy to, uh, print it in steel and it is quite sturdy um, it's not here it's thicker than some of the other areas uh, but in future if this is my design I would definitely beef up the thickness of these parts and then we are to one of our rear middle belt this whole belt unit 
uh, that goes around the lawn chair uh, is 3D printed in the steel and bronze uh, combination. Um, and this basically holds the nine barrels and it holds the control panel. And the strength is there, um, but the connecting points uh, could be beefed up. It is pretty thin. Here is the center part of the launcher. Uh, we have the firing mechanism, um, the uh, power source, and the general ignition system of the launcher. Um, so we have the this rear uh, belt that is 3D printed in steel. We have a front belt that's 3D printed in steel. Uh, but this right here is just uh, some sheet metal that was uh, bent to the curvature of these belts and then welded in place. So you can see right here, it pretty well bent to the correct uh, angle. There's not too much of a gap uh, between the two. Uh, but that was 3D printed to, or uh, welded to the belt. Uh, and then we have the rear pistol grip that is welded to the belt. And it's also welded to that C channel right here. It's hard to tell with the paint over it. Uh, but basically this uh, is one of the pistol grips to hold on to. Um, and it has a connector just like the shoulder rest. So the pistol grip, the connector, and then to the belt. Not the best welding in the world, uh, but you can see right there. Uh, that's all 3D printed. We're gonna move over to the trigger system. Um, this rod is just an aluminum rod that is um, held in place with uh, a 1911 spring that was, has been cut in half um, and that creates the tension for uh, the rod to move forward. Uh, but this component right here that holds the rod, the rear support uh, for the rod, is 3D printed in steel and it's welded onto the sheet metal. Um, and then you have the aluminum bar and then we come to the control unit um, which this um, lever is 3D printed and it's left in the original color. So it's like a bronze kind of goldish color to it. And that is because it is printed in um, a steel with uh, a bronze uh, filling to it. Uh, so it's not pure steel and it's not pure bronze. It's kind of a hybrid. Um, and then we have this uh, unit right here that's also 3D printed in steel. Um, and that basically facilitates holding uh, the trigger rod and it holds the, um, the button to uh, ignite the electronic match inside the rocket. Uh, so when you're ready to fire and you're clear, you would just push this down and the spring tension on this rod will push, uh, will go through a hole in both the, this and the lever and it hits the button. Uh, trigger is uh, just an off the shelf uh, button. Um, and then the mechanism that holds the button is 3D printed in plastic. And then you see the wires right there running down to um, the battery components. So inside this 3D printed, this is just the exact same thing as the uh, rear grip, um, 3D printed in steel and bronze. Uh, and then it has two nine volt batteries uh, held in a 3D printed plastic container and that is wired to the button and then also wired down here to this connector right here and this basically um, connects with the rockets and that'll allow um, the power the electricity to get to the electronic matches and also facilitate the uh, triggering of the mechanism. Flipping over the launcher on the opposite side, we have the siding system. Um, this bar is just plain old C channel. Um, it's an off the shelf part, it's made of steel. 
uh, pretty easy to work with. Uh, but this component right here, the part that holds the uh, the C channel and connects to the barrels is 3D printed in steel. I think you can see some of the layer lines. And this is tack welded onto the barrel. Nothing crazy about that part. Uh, it's actually not a ring around it. It's more of like a semicircle. Um, it doesn't go all the way around. 3D printed steel shrinks. So it's easier just to print half a circle and um, have it welded on rather than reaming out the whole of it came undersized. And it has two of these uh, connecting points. So one in the rear and then a duplicate um, in the front of the the C channel and that's basically having two supports um, they came out pretty identical when printed um, and this can take a red dot I drilled and tapped a hole to allow it to use a a you know a NIDAR red dot reflex sight uh, it's not really red dot it's more of just a, a reflex sight And uh, that wasn't original, but I thought it would be fun to add it in there. Um, in all the video games, they always add <laughs> that reflex sight, even if it wasn't period correct. And then we come to the front of the launcher. The, you know, a, a belt designed to hold the barrels um, from the front. Um, you see there's some paint in there. That's actually not rust for the most part. That's just orange spray paint. We played with the um, coloring and we removed some of the orange paint from this, but uh, the barrel still got a little uh, residue left on them. This is where the rockets come out of. Um, it holds the barrels together. You have some lightning holes in it. Um, I'm not sure why the original had these holes. I believe it may have had something to do with um, allowing the exhaust to flow through or to cut back on some weight. So the only other component that I really did in 3D printed steel was um, this uh, rocket clip. Uh, I originally wanted to use this, um, but I decided against it. I think the 3D printed plastic one was more than enough for this application. It was more of like a, a disposable unit that I could fire and you know forget about. This, on the other hand, which was you know rather heavy and expensive. Um, <laughs> I don't think I could throw it away that easy, but I kept the the part as I think um, you know it could be useful for um, testing welding with other materials and kind of get a sense of what three D printed steel looks like. This will be the future of manufacturing and many future parts. Um, right now, machines themselves are not affordable on the you know consumer market. I used a 3D printing company to do a lot of the prints. Um, it is coming down in cost, but you know don't expect a metal 3D printer in your home uh, for you know at least five, 10 more years. Uh, I think the cheapest one on the market right now is about $5,000 and you need uh, an assortment of other uh, parts to make that work. And you're not gonna get as good a quality as you know with this and this does have its flaws uh, as you can see those circles are kind of warped a little bit not all the circles like you can have clean edges uh, but for some reason when these printed this little cone it kind of like flopped over the top I don't know what caused that but overall um, I'm really happy with the project. I learned a lot of lessons. Um, welding this, uh, the parts to the barrels was a challenge. Um, it didn't, um, it wasn't really suited for that type of welding. Um, but we made it work. It took uh, several hours of welding to, to, to get this all together. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're really happy with how it came out. And uh, I appreciate you guys supporting and buying books. That means a lot to me. Uh, you know, th this wouldn't have been possible without you guys supporting me. Uh, so I'm going to have some updates in the future with the M202, which is our next project. Um, hopefully getting my Form 1 approved uh, shortly. 
That way I can start building. I'm going to look at new manufacturing techniques that don't involve 3D printed steel. I'm going to be looking at composite materials and carbon fiber and fiberglass uh, to bring down weight, to be able to do it myself at home and uh, generally just experiment. I don't want um, the third book just being a copy of this. Um, I wanted to experiment with all new materials. Uh, in the next book and, uh, you know, expand our knowledge of manufacturing um, in a more improvised manner, but, you know, making a quality product. I'd like to say this is pretty realistic. Uh, there's some differences between this and the original in terms of, you know, shapes, uh, how the power source is connected into the system. But overall, the from a distance, you would not be at fault at believing this is a real live example from World War II and not just, um, you know, a toy. So I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a, a great day and thank you for watching.